Tor, <coughs> could I please have everyone back at the table or online? Right. So welcome back to the Planning, Environment and Parks Committee. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to all of you back in the public forum and all members of staff and everyone else here as well. Um, thank you to IMSB, sorry about the um, chopping and changing in times, but thank you for being here and understanding the, the extraordinary items that were coming before us. Right, I opened with a karakia before the governing body, so now we will move to our apologies. We have absence from Councillor Fully, lateness from Deputy Mayor, Councillor, um, Deputy, <laughs> Deputy Simpson. Deputy Mayor, Councillor Desley Simpson on council business. Um, Chris is here, and I don't think there was any request for early departure. No. Nope. Could I have a, I'll get, oh, sorry. Sorry, I do now have a request for early departure at 5 p.m. if we're not finished by then. Okay, we Thank will you. work our best to be finished well before that. Thank you, Councillor Ferry. Um, sorry, Chair, early departure to um, 3.45. Thank you. Okay, uh, Deputy Chair, Councillor Dalton to move that. I have a seconder. Cool. Member Ashby. All those in favour? Um, to the, we got an email on a, online, so we will just acknowledge that Councillor Leone and Councillor Baker are online, but we don't have to approve their attendance. Uh, Declarations of interest, there are none that I know of. Anybody? No. Our confirmation of the minutes from last time. Could I have a mover? Councillor Walker. Councillor Walker. Seconder. Deputy Chair. Councillor Dalton. All those in favour? Aye. Anyone opposed? No. There are no petitions. <coughs> Very large agenda today, and we are already now an hour and a half behind due to the extraordinary governing body before this. So we have a number of... Am I going to go through them one by one, or do I just go to... Oh, I didn't realise. West Auckland, they've withdrawn. Okay. Right. So we've had... Now we have up next, I'm assuming Quiet Sky Waiheke is here. Sorry, I didn't have a chance to come out and... Meet you before. Kia ora, so who uh, are you, Kim? What are you? Yes, I am. Cool. Yeah, too. Kia ora. We have um, we have five minutes of speaking, um, which. Oh. Try yeah, sorry about that. The mic sometimes. So Can we have a five minute, five minute section um, for you to present. We try and have questions within that five minutes, but we know that it, that period and sometimes goes over. But we'll try and keep it contained. But you do have five minutes. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Um, I'd first like to apologise that you may have received a great number of emails just in the last few days. Um, one of the reasons that Quiet Sky was set up was so that we could field a lot of the complaints. We found it a bit ironic that the planners were using the fact that we are now fielding all the complaints and they're not receiving them as a reason not to do anything. Um, so I do apologise that you may have received a great deal in the last few days. They'll stop, I assure you. Ne never apologise for public feedback. Okay. Um, look, I've only got five minutes. I, you have all seen the submission that Quiet Sky has made. Um, it's on the record. Um, I just want to talk about just one very important aspect of it. I want to introduce you to this beautiful island, Motukaha. Um, it's a small island just off the uh, southwest coast of Waiheke. It's a very, very important island because, and it's recognised that as a site of ecological significance, recognised by the council. The reason is because it is the home of these. This is um, what is known as Matuka Moana or the reef heron, Egretta sacra sacra. You may not recognize it, not surprising that there are only three to four hundred of these birds in New Zealand. It is recognized as a nationally endangered species. For exactly this sort of bird, this sort of location, in 2010, the New Zealand Coastal Policy Statement 
was introduced, a national policy. This replaced, and I want to emphasize this, the 1994 New Zealand Coastal Policy Statement. It was said very clearly, all local authorities were required to give effect under the RMA as soon as practical to this piece of national legislation. How is it possible then that just a couple of weeks ago, as you'll see from the picture on the left, on the right, sorry, that the planners consented a helipad with a flight path going slap bang over the top of this environmentally sensitive area? What do you think Mr. and Mrs. Igreta Sacra Sacra are going to do? They are not going to breed there. It's not how many helicopters, the very first one that comes over will be enough. So this isn't just an isolated case. And what's ironic, Mr. Chair, is the, the planner's own practice and guidance note on helicopters says very specifically, resource consent applications for helicopter landing areas within the coastal environment should be supported by an assessment against the New Zealand Coastal Policy Statement and supporting expert re reporting, including on biodiversity. This isn't the only one. All around Waiheke, we have coastal locations. I'm talking about 13 years since the planners were asked, were requested to give effect to this piece of national legislation as soon as practicable. There's one particular one I'll draw your attention to right down at the very bottom of that picture. Those were two helipads which were consented for the same owner so he could fly in even more often. And they go straight over Tamatuku Bay. This is a site of extreme importance. Let me just give you a quick view. There are others on there that also go over important environmental sites. This is the list of the, th of the classification of bird species from Tamatuku Bay, which these helicopters are going to be flying just a few feet above. Not only are they some of them nationally, some of them have international protection, such as the New Zealand Dottrell, because they are so rare. How can the planners claim that they are taking into account the New Zealand coastal policy? The fact of the matter is they aren't. They have not done so. Okay? It's very clear from the New Zealand. It said very clearly local authorities must amend regional policy statements in order to give effect to the New Zealand Coast. They have been ignoring national laws. Okay? This has gone on now for 13 years. What you're being asked to do again is a, go on ignoring the national laws. Go on. Is that my four minute call? No. Uh, so I've heard at the local board, the Waikiki local, the other, a planner trying to justify this. It was like a scene out of Yes Minister. It is completely untrue that they have given effect to this. Don't be confused by a lot of double speak. I'm afraid there is a, they, they are using the art of obfuscation. They've done it with local boards. They're going to try and do it again with you. The simple fact of the matter is they have not done what they should have done or started to do 13 years ago. They haven't even looked at it. We've recently had a paper done. This paper by a recognized marine, uh, uh, marine biologist, which shows all of this is showing that there are extreme effects on the environment, on endangered species. They have not even got somebody to do that. They have done nothing to apply the New Zealand coastal policy to give effect to it that they should have done 13 years ago. This is the time for them to do it. They need, you need to review the Haraki Gulf Islands district plan and give effect to this piece of national legislation. Do not let them kick the ball down the road again, Mr. Chair. They will say, ah, oh, we will look at it in four years' time. They said that before. It won't be four. It'll probably be 10 years before anything is done. Meantime, more and more endangered species will be affected by consenting helicopters in areas where they should not be consented. Good. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much for that um, very clear presentation. Um, I don't have any, I assume there are questions for you? Uh, Councillor Sayers. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. So, question is, you mentioned about that needs to be changes to the Hauraki Gulf Regional Plan, was it? It's a Hauraki, Hauraki, Hauraki Island, uh, Gulf Islands District Plan, District is the one I'm referring to. So do you it's got nothing to do with the marine plan. Okay, thank you. So, uh, do you know when that's coming up on the horizon for our opportunity to look at that? Do, do you know? When well, what the what the it was meant to come up to be uh, reviewed to be integrated in the Orkney Unit Plan in 2020. It was deferred again. It's now being suggested it will happen in another three years. Will it happen then? That's when they start. It'll take a number of years to do it. By which time this will. Happen. And I should add that if you don't decide to do it. Somebody will take this to the Environment Court, and then it may cost the council a great deal more money than doing it yourselves. I've just this morning had somebody come and say, we have a retired judge living near us. He says, legally, you guys are absolutely right. Very good. Uh, thank, you, thank you for the answer. Any other questions? Oh, well, thank you. Oh, Councillor Ferry. Sorry, I was trying to work out if I could Google the answer, but I haven't done it in time. So, with your, I don't know if I can beat Google. Yeah. Uh, with your map of Waiheke... Um, Do you want me to the, go back to it? Yeah, uh, the different... I, oh, I don't, I don't know, know, I know if can, you can, I'm... yeah. The different colours for that you've got red, orange and blue helipads. Yep. Thank you, staff. Um, can you just explain what the difference is? Well, the one, uh, the, the, the red one um, is one that we have no objection to whatsoever. Okay. It is the Westpac helicopter. And again, this was brought up in Excuse the meeting. We are not against we, against essential helicopters. We're not against the use of the police helicopters. We are against non-essential use of helicopters. Okay. That's nothing. We don't be confused by them saying, oh, a lot of these flights have gone in a Westpac. We love Westpac, particularly when you get to my age. So and, and some of the other ones are the ones that are in the process, hasn't been updated, but they're in the process of being consented. Okay. So, the, so it's going to go, the numbers are going to go on growing. We're up to 64. I predicted a couple of years ago that we'd be at 100 in five years. I think that was an underestimate. So, that, so just to clarify, so the orange ones, they're the ones that are under consent at the moment? I think they all are. Some of them, I... I this hasn't been updated recently. Some of those may well have already been consented. Okay, the, the number that you should consented. know is 64, as we understand it at the moment, okay. 64 and growing. Thank you. That's helpful. Thanks. Thank you very much. We don't have any more questions, so thank you. We will be debating both um, items to come, and we're, I'm going to ask some of the questions you asked at the item rather than trying to do it now. So thank you very, thank much. You very much for your time. I will just get um, Councillor Lee, would you like to move? Yes, I'm happy to move it. Cool. And, and a seconder, Councillor Walker. All those in favour? Aye. Anyone opposed? Cool. Thank you. Now, just for, um, I see there's a number of people filming in here, and that's public space, but it would be good if we could just film there because people's emails and things are open, people are working on their screen. So if, if that's okay, if we can just film from here and try and avoid any filming of councillors' computers, if that's okay. Thank you. Uh, cool. Next up, we have the Hearn Bay Residents Association. We've got Dirk Hudig. Sorry, I think I've only got one name, so if you could both introduce yourself and we'll get. Um, Don Matheson, D-O-N, was it? Cool. Thank you. Thank you. We'll make sure that your names are both recorded. If you just want to speak, you've got the um, talk button to the right there, and you've got your five minutes starting now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <coughs> I'll just put up the... <coughs> We've had a lot of problems with consent, uh, with uh, compliance issues. And the main issues is that... Uh, that, that uh, relevant and noise, flight path, and helicopter type. Um, we heard uh, the other day at the uh, <coughs> local board meeting that the council officers do not measure noise because it's too expensive. 
And uh, the other issue with flight paths is that pilots uh, operate under CAA rules, not under Auckland consent rules. So pilots may use different flight paths than, than are consented, and that's, that's life. Uh, flight paths are also unver unverifiable because in our area, transponders, which record them where, where these, these planes go, do not have to be on, and many people turn them off. So <clears throat> flight path deviation, in fact, affect other people for noise because the consents themselves measure the noise depend and as measured on the flight path that they're supposed to take. If they take a different flight path, then a whole different set of people and properties are affected by the noise from the helicopter. And these people have not been consented, has not been considered at all during the consenting process. Then there is the issue about complaints. The public can't access the consent conditions because they're not published. So if somebody has a consent, you can't find out what, what they're supposed to do. And there's also no easy way to complain about helicopters because if you go to the council website, then there's nothing there that, 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 that's for you to, to fill in. Um, council itself does not audit compliance at all and replies on, uh, relies on complaints. And it is just very, very, very difficult to successfully complain, complain with the council. Uh, and even if you ring the, the number, there's no option. That's, it gives you a hold of options. There's no options for helicopter complaints. So I'm not surprised that you're not getting too many complaints. We do get them, but, uh, but, but you don't. Uh, whether that's by design or, or omission, I don't know. Uh, <coughs> Council deals with consent holders. We believe that consent holders should be able to prove compliance. If they can't prove compliance, then there's a problem. It would, such proving that would require transponders to be on at all times. So the consents don't require that. You could still require it by ensuring that if there is a complaint and the, and the, and the uh, consent holder can't prove that he complies, that he should have his transponder on. And council should check noise complaints. It's not too expensive. If you're not going uh, to be prepared to uh, put up with the expense, then you shouldn't be uh, making these consents. And the last thing is consents are required to be monitored by the, the consents a uh, consent holder is required to pay for their own monitoring. So it's no cost to the council. So it doesn't matter whether, whether, whether it's expensive or not. We just now go to a suspected breach, the, uh, to a breach follow-up that hasn't happened. It's a group of townhouses uh, <coughs> and the consent holder has changed the helicopter uh, that he uses. The townhouses say that the noise is much louder than it was originally. The council has been made aware of this uh, but nothing's ever happened. And let's face it, consenting and compliance is a mess. It's a real mess. It needs attention. And the councillors should demand uh, attention. We'll leave this up to, you can read the, the, the rest of this, uh, and I'll turn the page over and open for questions. We are open for questions. Thank you very much. Very clear presentation again. Um, Councillor Lee, did you have a question? Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman, and, and good morning, gentlemen. Um, obviously, this is not a, a new issue, and there's been media coverage about this, particularly in your area, for some years now. Um, it's a complex issue on the face of it, but in, in the view of, of, of your association, what, be, what would be the simplest um, lawful way to resolve this matter once and for all? I would hope that there is a review of the requirements for investigation of complaints, and I would hope that we would be consulted uh, when that is being designed. And it should be done 
yesterday. Thank you. Are there any other questions? No? Nope. Thank you both, and we will be debating both the papers in the next little while, so you're welcome to stay. So we will just get... Councillor Lee, would you like to move again? And Councillor Ferry would like to second. All those in favour? Anyone opposed? No, thank you. Thank you both very much. Okay, just Jeanette? Yes. Cool, so next up we have Quiet Sky Waitamata, and so we have Jeanette Budget here. So if you'd like to introduce yourself, and once again you have um, five minutes speaking. Press on the right there, the talk. Yeah, perfect. It is now, it, it is Jeanette Budget indeed. Budget with two Ts. And for the record, I don't support the budget cuts. Um, I'm here, however, to talk about um, helicopters um, in Waitamata. Um, um, we're here because we believe that private helicopter use, in particular in residential areas, threatens Auckland's vision, commendable vision, of a sustainable, compact and livable city. With urban growth and intensification, the stakes get ever higher. Uh, we are working for a future that preserves quiet skies and peaceful communities. We do support um, public safety helicopters, of course, Westpac, all of that we completely accept. We oppose um, private helicopters in residential zones. Um, we know um, the general public don't want helicopters in their neighbourhoods. We know because we've asked them. 3,000 people in the Waitamata and Gulf um, Ward have signed a petition to that effect. 130 people wrote to oppose the consent variation to increase helicopter flights at a property in Hearn Bay. This apparently was a much higher number than is usual. Um, it, the council complaints register in no way um, records the, the high public feeling about private helicopters in Auckland. It, you know, it's nearly impossible to record a complaint and um, we think council should be listening to these significant numbers. We, we'd really um, question who benefits from private helicopters. It's a handful of people who, as far as we can see, could drive a few kilometres to a heliport we're not here to suggest where those other heliports might be, but commercial heliports seem like a really sensible solution to this. This image shows the properties in Herne Bay with helipads, and I think it's kind of instructive. Two of the properties are large holdings. Uh, one is probably 1,000 square metres, a smaller one, 15 Cremorn Street, about 1,000 square metres, about 20 metres wide, this section, uh, right beside a public reserve. Um, no accounting for the people who use that beach and reserve when these consents were um, allowed. We wonder what the users of the beach um, might experience when both uh, helipads are being used. We, we, um, we wonder about the property in between and if they were to apply for a helipad, yes, they would certainly need their neighbour's consent and it's the, it, they might get it. But, you know, how, how does council kind of anticipate uh, the cumulative effects of helipads? They're very, very close to each other. Um, I'm just going to skip... I'll come back to that other slide. So our concern is... is um, goes far beyond private property interests. Um, we're here for the people who use the beaches and the foreshore. This image shows scouts kayaking in Cox's Bay. They're really concerned about a proposal to put a helipad on that point just behind them. Um, that point, incidentally, um, is home to a very significant roost of oyster catchers. Um, what about the environment and the law? 
you know, heli because helicopters rely on seeing the harbour as a kind of aerial um, motorway, they are um, always on the coast. Auckland has a very long coastline, thank you, and um, the Waitamata is a rich uh, area for birds, d the banded dotterels, the dotterels, the New Zealand dotterels, and the Caspian terns that Kim mentioned all live in Cox's Bay, adjacent to Miola Reef, which of course is a special ecological area. So there's plenty of bird life to be protected um, in right in our harbour next to the city. Council appears to be ignoring its own helicopter practice guidance note in this regard, and we're just simply not seeing the robust assessments of environmental effect that we could expect to see. And what about the money, that, which is a bit topical at the moment? Council panels tell us it would cost 250k to make a plan change. That, I, I will go as far as to say, is that won't cover the case of a community fighting a single helicopter through the courts. That's a single case. Um, we understand risk of litigation from would-be helicopter owners, um, stops council regulating them properly. We'd like to understand more about this issue. We, we don't get it. We don't get the rationale. We consider council's exposure to legal risk by not giving effect to the law. The coastal policy statement, the noise rules um, may cost them a lot more um, in terms of class action suits. Let's think more long term about this. We've all got better things to do than than debate helicopters. We argue that prohibiting helicopters will save us all a lot of money. So what should happen? We don't think the current AUP helicopter rules are fit for purpose. They don't give effect to the New Zealand Coastal Policy Statement. They don't, it doesn't recognise the rights of the public and reserves and foreshore or the wildlife that lives there. Uh, Helicopter noise infuriates and enra enrages many of us. Um, and, you know, acoustic modelling by consultants is just a mathematical model. It always disagrees depending on who's paid for the report. And uh, there is a um, rule that averages noise levels. It's a bit of a nonsense if you've got two or three helicopters lined up on adjacent properties. Um, our simple and urgent message today is please make helicopters and residential zones a prohibited activity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions, Jeanette? No questions? Cool, thank you very much. Um, we'll yes. have a mover. Councillor Darby, seconder. Councillor Watson, those in favour?